back, it's day 15. Yeah, I can't really give a countdown anymore. Okay, well, uh, technically I can, but it wouldn't be... Well, there's not much point, because, yeah, it could change at any time, so... It's day 15 of lockdown, and the cases number is now up to 2003, and the number of confirmed deaths is now at 24, so that's an increase of 6 since yesterday. And, yeah, in the news which caught my eye today, okay, well, I don't know, trending stories or whatever you want to call it, um, pretty much... The school holidays may be cancelled for the rest of the year, <clears throat> and apparently they might be writing exams in January, which I heard from my niece, whose online classes, which I'm not sure how they're going to work, because I don't think they're too well organised, but apparently they'll be getting sent worksheets or something like that online, which they would have to then complete and I'm presuming email back or submit or something like that. So yeah, um, it looks like there's going to be no more school holidays this year, apparently, and that's to make up for the time that they've lost so far, and I'm presuming not all schools would be going for the online option because I'm sure for a lot of the government schools that just isn't an option because while you can argue that children have access to cell phones, I'm not sure that the school's technology side is that advanced that they can actually, or they have an app, so to speak, or something which would make it easy for them to serve the educational materials required for the work to be done, plus data is a problem because most people can't really afford to have enough data for any form of communication. Um, it will definitely not apps or downloading worksheets or anything of that nature. So yeah, that's the, pretty much the story on the school holidays, so yeah, for all the school kids out there, I hope you've enjoyed the two weeks of well, holidays you've had so far of the lockdown. Okay, well, you guys had a day or two beforehand, I think. But, yeah, um, you hope you guys have enjoyed your break, because it appears your break might be over. And I guess for those of you who aren't doing anything because you're still on lockdown, enjoy it while it lasts. And in some other interesting news, in Wuhan, in China, where the coronavirus epidemic started, or, well, apparently started, allegedly, let's say, because there's debate about whether it actually started there or not, and I don't want to get into any of that stuff for now, but the people of Wuhan have been celebrating having traffic jams for the first time in, well, quite a while there, I'm presuming. So that's one piece of pretty funny news, the fact that they would actually celebrate having traffic jams. Be like, yay, we're stuck in traffic again, this is awesome. But I'm guessing you would feel like that if you'd been stuck in your apartment for four months. And most of us in the world might experience a similar sensation in whenever we get to get out of our well, relative lockdowns and our respective countries because obviously we're all on a different time scale and at different points of our curves and so on and so forth. And another piece of news which I'm very happy to see is that the health minister, Dr. Zwelem Kize, I think he's a doctor, um, has announced that everyone in South Africa should wear or should cover their face faces like wrap at least three layers of cloth around your face to protect you from, well, breathing out any COVID, I presume, is the purpose, because that's how it would work if everyone, okay, well, I know I've talked about this a few times before, but if everyone covers up, then the germs don't spread. So, yeah, 
pretty much that's a positive on that side and yeah that means hopefully I won't get COVID although I was kind of hoping to get it over and done with but I guess yeah so that's a positive and looking forward to seeing what other advances are made because yeah due to the announcements that the curves okay well not announcements but Okay, there's a guy I follow on YouTube, Dr. John Campbell. He's a pretty educated guy, so if you can check him out, check him out. And yeah, I've been watching what he has to say, and he was talking about how it appears that the admissions into ICU in the, several of the countries in Europe appear to be, or seem to be slowing down kind of thing, reaching the top of their curve, so with any luck that would mean that, like all that definitely shows that the lockdown is having an effect, and that would mean that for the rest of us who are on lockdown, to figure out an approximate time scale, Okay, what I was thinking about this, so it would appear that it takes approximately four weeks of lockdown before you start seeing an effect in the numbers of infections, although you won't actually see that for a while. Okay, well basically you won't see it physically immediately, but it will be happening. Um, and obviously it takes well, let's say two weeks of st steady decline for it to become a noticeable and confirmed trend. So, yeah, then it would be about another two to four weeks before the death curve also cat peaks and starts to decline. And then from there we ride it out till it's all over, I presume. Although I'm not quite sure how we'd ride it out, or well, I don't know how this whole thing would work because, uh, like afterwards, are we gonna come out? Or I mean, I mean I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, it's a tricky question. Like, if okay, well. Technically, presumably, if we stay on like a 100% lockdown until every detected patient and every seemingly sick person has been either treated, cured, discharged, or, well, sadly, might have been added to the death count, but once there's basically no more cases detectable and they've basically done 100% checking of the entire country, which also gets tricky because technically if you check someone and then they go shopping and catch, okay, well basically it's a really tricky thing to basically know if you've actually tested everyone because if it takes months to test the entire population of a country, so much can change with the people you tested previously. Like, heck, it can change with people you tested an hour previously, never mind the people you tested two to three weeks previously, so to speak. So, yeah, pretty much that means, yeah, well, we're stuck. I don't know what we're going to do about this, but it would appear that, <clears throat> well, because, well, I'm not sure how this works, but... I'm guessing it's because we are not quite as populated as China, or while the rest of the world isn't as populated as China, except possibly India and one or two countries in that area. Um, so we won't be looking at an insane number of people getting infected. Okay, America, New York area is an exception, but like I said, they're very densely populated. So. For the other places where the population density is more spaced out or less, then you shouldn't have as big an impact with COVID. So, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to see how long it will take, but I'm hoping it should take us less than four months lockdown to 
resolve things and hopefully get life back to normal. And as I was saying, now that they've got the compulsory face wrap, if everyone actually does this, technically we might be able to return to things semi-normal or almost a hundred percent normal just with a little bit of more personal hygiene involved for some of the informal sector areas of well things around the country and Africa in, in general because I think we have, all have the equivalent of taxi ranks and markets and so on and for the international viewers overseas, if anyone is watching this from a first world nation, when you think of a market, it is nothing like a market in Africa. Okay, well, depending on which market. But basically, unless it's a posh market that's aiming at upper class and touristy people, then it's definitely nothing like any market that you would have around Europe. Okay, let me not say that as a fact, but basically I'm pretty positive you would never see anything like the markets you get in Africa in terms of hygiene standards and so on. Yeah, so that's it from me, and hope you guys enjoyed my little ramble. Um, it's been an interesting day today. Okay, well, haven't done much fiddling with some music and stuff. Um, yeah. So that's a wrap, and yeah, I'm going to call it a night, and salute till next time. Hope you guys stay safe, stay home, and yeah, oh, another one from John Campbell. Two meters distance may determine our existence, so stay away from people when you're outside, and yeah, stay safe, stay home, and watch out for Corona.